Hello, everybody. Within this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use drop downs to logically process data sets into a filtered list. Okay, so first, let me go ahead and import my data set, and I'm going to be using this one right here US National Parks. I have it, and the way that I want to process it, I don't necessarily want to process it by the name, although I could, because there are ways that, for example, there are uh, national parks that have words like mountain, canyon, sea canyon, reef, caverns, islands, uh, lake, you know, very identifiable words, valley, and then valley, see? So very identifiable words. I don't want to do this. What I want to do is go into the description. So it can tell me multiple things. You see, covering most of the Mount Desert Island and other coastal islands, Kata features the tallest mountain. So I want to be able to, I want, what I want to do is filter it through this description because there are mountains inside of um, this first uh, park, the Acadia. Okay? There is mountains, there is islands, and there's other, uh, there's lakes, there's a lot of other stuff that I, that I can get, okay? But if I just look at the name, I, I'm not gonna get the whole picture, all right? So let's go ahead and get started. This is what I wanna use to process it, this description here. And good programming practice is to always slowly filter what you're gonna be showing within your list, okay? So always start with what you know and then build incrementally. So by that, I mean, let me just use very minimal stuff so I know that my program is working. So I'm gonna get it to work with only two columns for right now. I'm gonna get the description and then I'm gonna get, let me see. And then probably just the names. Just two, so I do not complicate myself a lot, whole lot. Okay. Next, I know that I'm using the multi-list filter pattern. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a. The first, let's put call this one name. I'm going to call this one description. So I'm going to make a, uh, a list called filter name. And it's going to be empty. So I haven't filled it yet. Anything I haven't processed yet and then filter description. There we go. And always practice good programming practices, make good use of space. So your program becomes highly readable, not only for yourself or anybody else that may be looking at it as well. Okay. Next thing, what I gotta do is that if I want to filter these with a drop down, I need to know what I'm specifically I'm looking for, okay? And what I want to do is I want to I want to filter this depending on, for example, in this instance, I want to filter it with strings, and I want keywords like mountain, lake, island, uh, valley, canyon. Another uh, one was creek. Another one was let's see, let's let's just look for the word forest. I'm sure we'll find something like that. Okay. Notice how I'm typing all of these in lowercase m. Well, in all lowercase, all the first words are in lowercase. You're so used to typing them like, you know, uppercase. But because these descriptions are fairly lengthy, they're fairly lengthy, the most logical thing to do is, for example, you see how here it says island? It's with a capital I, and island is always going to be capital I. Okay? But things like, for example, mountain are lowercase. Some things like coast, things that are like a woodland, you know, like you see forest, they're all lowercase. So what I want to be, I have to be able to do is the following. So let me go ahead and get my forest, my, maybe my for loop, get my conditional. I need to be able to throw it inside of a function. The reason why is because it constantly has to be updated constantly has to be updated. And at the very beginning of my program, I always wanna empty my lists. The reason for this is that if I do not empty them, 
every time my, 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 my function is called, I'm going to be getting, well, my, my list for filter name and filter description are going to get longer and longer and longer. Okay. Then let me go ahead and get an on event block because the event is going to be that whenever this drop down changes, which is called drop down one, whenever it changes to something else, I got to be able to make a function call to my function so I can filter the list for me again. Next. Uh, I also forgot this one variable that is very important. I like to call it a choice. The choice variable is getting a string from my program. Okay. So what choice is going to do in here, inside of my function, choice is going to be getting text. Let me get the, it's going to be getting the text from this ID over here text from this ID. Oh, and then I put it over here as a, there you go. Choice, there you go. And then I get this from the drop down. And I think for the most part, I think this program looks good. So now I want to filter through my data set of called name. A very common mistake that I see uh, beginner programmers do is that they look at uh, the filtered list. The filtered list right now is empty. And you haven't even processed it. So it's always going to be empty. It's always the value here is always going to be zero. So make sure that you're getting the data set that you want to go through. And description and name are pretty much the same length. So it doesn't necessarily matter what you do. So next up. I got to be able to do a, a value when I use the includes function. Okay. And then inside of it, I need to throw in the two lowercase. Okay. Then I'm going to be looking at whatever choice token, okay, whatever the, the value of choice is. And then from here, I'm going to go show my text because this became like solid. Now I'm changing within my text and I want to be able to change whatever is found in the description at a given element that I change that to lowercase. And if it includes whatever the words choice is, then we're going to filter our list. So remember our choices are these right here. All right. So then let's move on. Append the item, append an item, and I'm going to be filtering my list. Filtering. And through there, a filter no and put whatever the name is at index position this one filter description i want to add whatever is on description cool. so i think for the most part my program is working and i can add the, let me go ahead and design a simple text area. And then within this text area, what I want to do is just set text. And I can do just one. I can use only one. I can only use what? Let me show you. So I can set the text for this one on text area number one. And I could create a variable. I know that code.org shows you to do a variable called text output. But it's not it's not really necessary. You can do it. It's, an option. it's another way to do it. But I honestly prefer not even having to make it a variable, so I don't have to keep track of something else. And if I'm not going to use it anywhere else in my program, why make it in the first place? So what I want to do is, for example, park name. This is a park name. And let me see what. Well, and then I'm going to concatenate it and I'm going to put whatever we found on filter name at that index position. See? And then go back to text. And then the filter, actually, I want to make a new line and put description. And then just 
but whatever the description is. And I can make a new line too if I wanted it just to be a little bit more neatly formatted description that's like given in the exposition. Uh, yeah. However, with this right here, I think it's only going to allow me to like set it up once. Let's see. Mountain. And it does just allow me to do it once, and then the I goes back to zero. So actually, I need to make another uh, update screen. Let's see. Let's make another update screen right here. And then I'm going to want to set the text and then do a list scrolling pattern. So let's go with an easy one. Actually, I got to have this inside of an on event block. Let me put them over here. My on event blocks should be together as a code segment. So I can easily find them. So on the event that let's make a button and then the button we can just call it next. Next. Next part. Yeah. So on the event. The button one is clicked. What we want to do is we want to go to the next item on our list. And we're going to have to create a variable called index. We're always going to start it at zero, at index at zero. And when index is less than the filter name length, this one, then we want to do index plus plus else we want to return to the beginning of the list so index will equal zero and it'll be very apparent how this this program works and i will throw this inside of over here set the text part name and now this is not going to be i anymore it's going to be index index and you got to be very careful where you want to set this because right here it's going to be before so it's not going to increment it and if i put it over here the first value is never going to show so let's try it over here first all right i had to refresh code.org because it gave me an error but i knew my program was right so i run it see filter name nothing is in there i put in mountain and you see it filled up you got list I got everything in here click next part acadia description Covering most of this non desert island, blah, 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 blah. The next park. So the Acadia is the first park, right? The last park is going to be Yellowstone. So let me get to Yellowstone. There you go. I passed Yellowstone, and it came back to Acadia. And there we have it a full functioning program. And this is all we needed. I basically only used two items. I never use my third one and I incrementally slowly throughout my program to make sure. So once again, to recap, um, and it's just about being consistent and just practicing this stuff. Um, you, you get your, your columns from your data set, you create your filtered lists, you create the choice. Okay. The variables are going to need, you're going to need for a drop down. You're at least going to need something for choice. And if you got to move through it, I just did a simple button. Next, you could use a, a back button, previous park button. That's perfectly fine for right now. Uh, drop down, my drop down one, as long as it changes, my function, which is all of this in here, is going to continuously get updated. And I threw everything in there. So empty in my list to begin with, get choice from the drop down, process choice right here instead of having the string already set whatever these were, and remember they're all lowercase because I use a description, I changed it all to lowercase. If I would have mounted an M, it wouldn't have registered all the places that have mountains. The same thing for all of these other strings here. Okay. Then append that list, depending on what they're giving you, uh, filter name, filter in our, our, our name, the filter name list, the filter description list, whatever you, they found at those given index positions, whether they found the words valley, mountain, forest, creek, 
as long as they found them, they add them into this list. Okay. And then, of course, my my list scrolling pattern that I put inside of button one. Okay. And we could have thrown this inside of a um, in a an update screen, sort of, but it's not really necessary. But we could have done that too. So we could have kept this area neat and clean. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, within this video and within the description, you will be finding this code in case you need to be going through it so it can help you out. Please remember to use it just in order to uh, mess around with the program, remix your code. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be creating a video later on on how to use a um, let me see, text input bar to filter your list. This one is so much more complicated but still very doable. You just need the tools as to how to work with this one. Thank you for watching.